Welcome to the broadcast, uh, ladies and gentlemen, fellow Ambassonians. It's a privilege to come to you again this precious, wonderful day to uh, brief you with what is going on uh, with our revolution. I want to appeal to you to, as usual, go ahead and hit your share button if you are watching on Facebook. Let us populate this platform as soon as we can. I have uh, quite an interesting presentation that I bring to you today. And I want to say good evening. Good evening to Ground Zero. It is a privilege to come into your homes live. And I hope you are doing great and standing your grounds and looking forward to victory. Looking forward to all of us getting to Boya. Please, I will come to you with the presentation the moment that we hit a thousand people, a thousand people on this Facebook screen. For those of you watching from your television sets, ABC on Ground Zero, you don't have to worry. You just need to be patient to give us uh, 10, 15, 20 minutes on this uh, Facebook platform to uh, populate the, the, the audience. So please go ahead as you join, quickly hit your share button. I come to you with a very, very important presentation. As you join also, let me know that uh, the sound quality is good enough. Please let me know that your sound quality is good. Uh, please go ahead and uh, give me uh, give me hit me uh, hit your share button. Go ahead, hit your share button. All right, ladies and gentlemen, please go ahead and hit your share button. Let me come to you so I can come to you with this presentation proper. This is going to be very, very, very interesting because I happen to be dealing with some uh, interesting subjects here, uh, subjects that I believe most of you thought we have put behind us. I'm talking about the arson uh, on the Kumba General Hospital and the subject of school resumption. I, I believe a lot of you out there thought we had put this issue uh, behind us. But once in a while, because it remains an issue, especially the school question remains an issue that lots of parents on ground zero and ground one, of course, are concerned about. And who wouldn't be concerned? Who wouldn't be concerned about it when it when it comes to uh, their their children sitting at home for years, for years without going back to school? So we thought it very, very, very important to come back and address this subject. Let the parents, let the students know what uh, this interim government is thinking about it. Uh, again, please we need to see the screen grow, the popular, the, the, the Facebook uh, population grow as soon as possible, as quick as possible, so that I can come to you with the presentation proper. I want to appreciate again Ground Zero for watching, sitting there in front of your television, ABC, and watching live. If you have your Facebook right in front of you on your phone or your tablet, I like to know that you are watching in front of your television, not on your phone, but in front of your television on ground zero. Let me know where you are watching from. From, In other words, pick your telephone and go onto Facebook. Let me know that you are watching from the confines of your home, your sitting room, your parlor on ground zero. 
Let me know where you are watching from, please. And tell me, let me know a feel of the sound and picture quality on Ground Zero. Again, please, as you join, go ahead and hit your share button. I would like to bring you the presentation as quickly as possible once we reach a thousand counts on this Facebook platform. And again, I, I acknowledge I am quite early today. I am I'm quite on time today. I got born again over the past week, so I hope I maintain this attitude. Thank you very much for all the past weeks and past months, past months of your patience. It is not easy preparing the scripts of this presentation and coming to present them to you. Uh, it literally takes me two days, two days to prepare these scripts because I want you to know that everything that I bring to you is not uh, rushly put together. The words that I bring to you are carefully, carefully put on paper so that you can take every one of it really, really seriously. So please go ahead. I can see the numbers are growing rather quickly. I appreciate that. Those of you just joining, go ahead and hit your share button. Let me know who is joining. Cantona Eric, thank you for joining. So he says, welcome, my able secretary. Thank you, Eric. Yes, please, as you join, let me know what you are thinking. Not just about me, also about the revolution, about your interim government, about anything that uh, uh, comes into your mind about the revolution. So uh, let me know your comment. I also see uh, Awanda Rose. Thank you for joining. Kim B. Bernard. It's a blessing, Secretary Chris. I see Bims Ozairo in Sofine. Is uh, you could be you could be a better man, uh, gentleman. Uh, I see also Bernard in King Bazaar. He said the sound is great. I like to hear that. Thank you. I see also Tevis or Sheikh watching from Ikata. Wow, wonderful, marvelous. Good to hear that. Are you watching on your television or on your Facebook, uh, uh, Tavis? Let me know, please. Kim B. Bernard. It's a very okay, my able secretary. Thank you. I, I hope you are referring to the sound. I see Chi Clarence. Hi, Mr. Chris. Sound is 100%. I like you guys who are joining. I see the numbers are rising really, really quick. Please continue to hit your share button. I come to you with some two very, very, very important subjects to discuss today. So please, I want to bring it to you as soon as possible, as soon as we hit a thousand, a thousand audience on the screen. So go ahead and hit your, pla hit your share button as you join. Becky Awa, I see you. Amber Lyon, thanks for joining. Atem Kung Peter. I see you, sir. Bison Alias, wise man. Thank you. Say, welcome, sir. David Vision Man. Thank you. Thank you. Alphonse in Jukang. Jun I see you, sir. Tian Tiananmen Square. I see you. He says, no compromise with the devil. La Republic du Cameroon. Absolutely not, sir. You can trust that no one, no one in this interim government is going to compromise with the Republic of Cameroon. You can take this to the bank. No one will compromise here. Not with the Republic, not with Federalists. We are bound in one train, one train, the independent train to Boya. Marcel Cheban, thank you. Gordon Anya, thank you. Please hit your share button. We are, we are about 600 people to go before I come to you with a live present, with a, with a presentation. Fefe de Londre from Ida Bato. Are you sure? Are you watching actually from there? Let me know if you're watching on television. ABC Place. B Song, alias wise man, I mentioned you. He said you're watching from Bordeaux, France. Good to hear that, sir. Amber Man, watching from Boya in Ground Zero. That is wonderful. Amber Man, are you watching on television or on your gadget, mobile gadget? Let me know, please. I also see Mado Bami, Amber Zonia. 
is all the signs of love. Thank you, Mado. Aliesa uh, Valentine. I see you. Yes, Mr. Chris. I'm in ground zero in Bambui. Wonderful. I schooled in Bambui, Cass Bambui. And the last time I visited there, uh, I think about uh, uh, 2016, I couldn't recognize the place uh, anymore. The place had changed, had changed. I couldn't even recognize Cass Bambui as I left it anymore because when I left for Cass Bambui, uh, uh, I think that was in 90, 1990, only, uh, only, um, ENS Bambeli and Cass Bambeli were the two main structures, including the Agri School. But it was literally a bush. And the last time I visited, the first I visited in 21 years, in 21 years that I visited, the place changed with a university I just couldn't, I mean, cast looked like some little herds. I mean, we used to call it cast complex. But when I went back 2016, it looked like a herd. So, a lot of change. But I'm glad to know you're joining from uh, Bambeli. I'm sure you're joining near Cassava Farm, right? All right. Uh, Sam Gibbet APA. I see you, sir. So, punctuality. It's a problem. You are very right, so unfortunately sometimes we just can't beat it. But today I tried. Uh, please, uh, do me a favor, hit your share button. Those of you just joining, the moment we, we are about, we are less than 600 people to go. Please, as you join, go ahead, hit your share button, hit your share button so that we can quickly populate this uh, platform, Facebook platform, and join Ground Zero with this uh, presentation. Ground Zero is watching live, live. All right, Talam Frederick in King, I see you. Address, Anderson, thank you for joining, sir. I see also, uh, I see Igwe Jared, it's a live from Dubai, wonderful. Asa Barnabas, we are watching from womb. Wonderful. Are you watching on tele Barnabas? Are you watching on the television or on your uh, mobile gadget? Let me know, please. I'd like to know who is watching on ABC. When you say you are watching from ground zero, let me know whether you are watching on your mobile gadget or on your television, please. I, I actually know majority are watching on Ground Zero from ABC television because I know bandwidth on Facebook on Ground Zero can be a problem uh, streaming uh, live video. Uh, Matthew Awinom, I see you sir, watching from Colorado. Theophilus Kuhn, say, uh, we must live free or die. You are right, Theophilus, we have no choice but to live free. Fonga Ted Inkin said, thinking about school resumption for our kids. You are right, sir. Thank you. Brandolin Aska from Germany, Berlin. I'm going to be seeing you there very, very soon, Brandolin. I hope you, I mean, Brand Online. Okay, that is it. I hope I will see you there. Please hit your share button. I want to come to you as soon as possible with a presentation proper. Taku Leku Alem Hillary. Say shalom, shalom, shalom means peace. Thank you, Hillary. I see Jessica Ade. I am thinking about the day we will reach Boya. Absolutely, Jessica, that is our dream, our dream. That is the end of our destination. Wilson Madzong, sound is perfect. Thank you. Gam Leslie, hey Chris, welcome. Watching live from Ground Zero, please. You people should clear the air. On the, my trip to Boya, don't be worried. The air will be cleared very, 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 very soon. Before this week is over, I guess, because I believe the audit report would have been submitted uh, by Wednesday. I am so sure they had a deadline of, uh, of March 15. Today is March the 18th. I want to believe that before Wednesday, that audit report should be out. We are not covering anything here. Again, I want to repeat what I said to you last time. Your interim government is not corrupt. We just need some level of accountability and transparency. And we are doing this 
doing this report, this audit, and talking about it in the public because we want you to know you have honest men, men of integrity, serving you in this government. Thank you. I see Orlando Esu Allen. I see Tem Tebi Roger. Please hit your share button. It's getting slower now. A little over 500, less than, less than 500 to go. Please do others a favor if you are joining to hit your share button. I won't start until we, you give me 1,000 people on this platform. All right. So please rush me. You be the one to rush me. I see Fonkem Valentine. Fonkem Valentine watching from Lewo. Wonderful. I hope you're watching. Lewo in Libya. I hope you're watching on your, on your television. Of course, it should be on television. I see also Desmond Elliott ever, ever watching me here. Thank you, Desmond. Roland Banyong. I see you, sir. And he says, when is the audit coming out today? It's 18. I just answered that question a second ago. Eric Yango, always here. Thank you, sir. We have to intensify the ground game. God bless. Absolutely. That is the reason why we are gathering in Germany next month. Ground game will change. It will change. I see the activists also doing something very wonderful in the National AK. Please let us support that initiative. It's a great job that the activists are doing. Let's support it. Uh, Joel Von Gang, I see you. Tem Tebi Roger, thank you, sir. Uh, Info Jesper, my name is Kinsley, and I am watching from... I miss it. I miss it. Sorry, it's cruel, it's cruel off. Uh, please go ahead again, hit your share button quickly, quickly, so I can come to you with this presentation. All right. Timothy Quibbe. Good evening, Chris. You're right. Asosomoto NS, my thoughts are with your family, Secretary Chris. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much. I just want to seize on the opportunity to thank all of you. I read most, most of your condolence greetings on the social media, uh, WhatsApp, Facebook, and through phone calls. And I really, really want to appreciate uh, your condolences. My father, I do not regret at all that he passed. He has spent uh, enough time on earth and dying or passing over 90, over 90, even still as strong as he was, we have no cause for regret. I want to thank God for giving him such a long life. And when it came, the moment for him to go, he did not spend one hour. He got up in the morning, spent the whole day uh, just as normal as any other person, not that he was sick. He spoke with my brothers, my sisters, who were in the diaspora, and they, you know, just, they just called to greet like, not every child would do to the parents. And around, uh, I think, 3 p.m. or so, uh, amber time, he developed uh, uh, perspiration and had breathing issues. They rushed him to the hospital, and I think he spent just about an hour there, and he was gone, just like that, just like that. Uh, again, I really want to appreciate all your condolences. And uh, the only regret I have is the inability to go back and give him a befitting, uh, a befitting funeral. But I know, I have no doubt, the moment we come, we will do that. And I am sure I am not the only one in this predicament. So many of you out there are paying this price. My father had moved out of his own compound because it was burnt down early last year. The thing was completely burnt down, completely everything brought down. And he had moved out of the house. So even if uh, I had opportunity to go home and bury him, we will, have, we will be burying him in a compound that virtually doesn't exist. But uh, again, the main regret we have is the inability to go and give him a befitting burial. 
But I believe the moment will come, the right time will come. When we step foot home, finally, all of us who have lost relations, I know some families who have lost uh, loved ones in the U.S. and in Europe, and they have to take them, go and bury either in Victoria, bury either in Kumba, bury either in Boya, because they can't get to the hometown. They can't get to the village because of security issues. And uh, so I know the moment is coming where lots of us shall be going home, not just to celebrate Boya, but to celebrate our family members who have passed, and celebrate our parents who have passed, and we should not lose hope. Let's keep on fighting. We don't fight. We don't go there. We don't give them a befitting barrier. I could never believe that my father would die and still be lying in the mortuary until the war is over. I don't know when to bury him. But I know for sure we are winning this war and I will go home. We will go home to give him the befitting burial that he deserves. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, hit your share button. Hit your share button while you are doing so. I got a few things to talk about. And uh, <clears throat> I got a few things to talk about. Of course, we are all aware that the U.S. Under Secretary for Africa was visiting uh, with uh, French Cameroon President Paul Bia today. And I saw your comments on the social media of the golden statues that he received, just like uh, the Commonwealth Secretary General and the Secretary General of the United Nations. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I don't want you to be worried about this particular man, the Under Secretary of State for Africa from the U.S. visiting uh, Cameroon and meeting Paul Bia and receiving a gift. This is a man of integrity. Uh, again, <coughs> uh, Secretary of State uh, 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 Nagy uh, is, is, is a man of integrity. And I think if you doubt his integrity, you will not also doubt, you will not doubt that of the ambassador, the American ambassador in Yaoundé. He is also a man of integrity. And so, no matter what they are giving or he is giving in Yaoundé, I have no doubt it is not going to persuade or change American policy one bit towards Paul Beer and uh, La Republique du Cameroon. So long as our president, Sisiko, Julius Ayuktabe, and others remain behind bars, whatever that Paul Beer gives to Tebo Nagy is not going to change American policy. Let us take note of that. We should not be worried with the gifts. We have seen them before, but this particular person is special. One thing I want you to know, uh, Mr. Nagy is a God-fearing man, a man who taught Sunday school. He is a pastor like me. That means you should trust me and trust him. I know, it's, I know there are some of you out there who never believe in pastors, but uh, listen, not every pastor is what you think. So please, let us believe in this man. Things are changing, and they are changing very, very rapidly. I can't wait to the end of April to see where things stand. Now, don't misquote me. I didn't say by end of April that the war will be over or that this crisis or conflict will be over. I just said, I can't wait to see what happens by the end of April. All that I know is that French Cameroon is under severe pressure from the international community to do the right thing, to fix this situation, to call for inclusive, open, unconditional dialogue. And they are the only ones who can do so. No one can do it. This interim government cannot. The United Nations cannot. They can only push them. They are the only ones. Only Paul Beer can do it. And if he will not do it, I can assure you, 
he will be pushed away like Mugabe was pushed away. Thank you so very much again. I have a few things to bring to you before I do the presentation. But in the meantime, I want these numbers to get to 1,000. We are less than 300 to go. Less than 300 to go. For those of you who have just joined, please hit your share button. Let us not keep ground zero waiting. All right. Now, let me also talk about this so-called Limbe. Now, I call, I'm, I'm giving it, I'm giving it the name they call it. Limbe Festa 2019. Ladies and gentlemen, this message goes directly to the Amber Restoration Forces on Ground Zero, especially in FACO. Mm -hmm. I know that you are already aware of this. That festivity has been banned. That festivity has been banned. Nothing, nothing like Festa is holding in Victoria because mothers cannot be losing their children, losing their husbands, losing their brothers and their sisters. And somebody is down in Victoria putting together some one-week festivity celebrations. What are you celebrating? Celebrating that new school, that old school in Sonora. How many of you have seen the communique that went out today talking about creating a bilingual and English station of a certain school that has been existing inside Sonora for about over 20 years, over 20 years, and no Ambazonian, no Southern Cameroonian was admitted or allowed to be admitted in that school. That school was meant only for the privileged Francophones, French Cameroon citizens, foreigners in our land, working within that facility, that Sonora facility. Can you believe that? Can you believe that? They rip us of our oil, of the taxation money that should come from it, and they open a school in our territory and it's only good for them. It is only good for their children. Not for five years. Not for ten years. Not for twenty years. This school has been going on for decades. And no Ambazonian has ever been admitted in that school. What is shame? I'm really pissed off about this. Mm -hmm. All right. And I also like to, uh, again, the first act festivities have been banned. We are going to come up with a lockdown, a lockdown for Victoria, if possible, for all of FACO. That thing must not take place in Victoria. We own and we control that territory. Nobody is going to wreck, cause any celebration to take place in that, in that city when people are mourning, when people are lamenting the loss of life and the loss of their kids, their husbands, their children. The mayor or the government delegate of that city is one. Whether they call him Musonge or Mo, uh, something like that. The mayor is one. If you love your life, sir, avoid that festival in Limbe. Do not ridicule yourself. Bring shame to yourself in trying to force that activity on the people of Victoria. Our eyes are on you. Uh, also, I like to I like to, I think I've exhausted most of the things, uh, except one thing that I like to talk about. We really want to sympathize, pass our condolences to the people in Wum, the people in Nwa, the people in Kumbo, the people in So, the people in uh, Bafut, for all that you have gone through. 
recently, in the past days. We have seen the massacres and the awesomes that French Cameroon soldiers have unleashed on your communities. I want to assure you, this war will not come to an end until French Cameroon has agreed, has agreed to compensate every Ambazonian family that has lost loved ones and property in this war. French Cameroon is using money from our natural resources to fight us, to sponsor this war. When it is all said and done, they would, I mean, they must use money from those same resources to pay reparations to those of you who have been put on their conditions of mourning. It will happen. And I just want to encourage again all of you, every Ambazonian out there, we have made tremendous progress in this war. And I think, I see this thing rounding up really, really soon. All we need to do is not to fall into the ploy of French Cameroon because one thing that French Cameroon is trying to do right now in their desperation is to dim your morale. They want you to give up. They want you to see the so many killings that they are killing on a daily basis. And let me say something first to the Restoration Forces. A lot of people do Cameroon know that right now you are not in the bushes because of the rains. They know that most of your time is spent indoors, somewhere in your communities. And their plan is to attack every home, every home where they know that Amber Forces reside. Their hope is, maybe in doing so, they will target and kill some of you. So please, please, you have to be very, very vigilant wherever you are. French Cameroon is about descending on every home in every community where Amber fighters reside. They are doing so to kill indiscriminately. They will not spare anybody. They will kill anybody, attack anybody that they find in those communities. So Amber forces, Amber forces are again, are again caution. Please, please, your security must come first at this moment. Do not allow them to attack you first. You attack them first. That is what you have to do. You have to be on the watch. You have to attack them first before they attack you. So, uh, again, these were the announcements I thought bringing to you today. We are almost hitting the 1,000 mark, and I won't keep you waiting anymore. Please go ahead, continue to, to hit your share button. Continue to hit your share button as I bring you uh, this presentation. Again, I just want to thank all of you, all of you, for your uh, condolences, letters, messages of condolences uh, to me for the uh, loss of my, uh, of, my, of my father. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for those messages. I really, really uh, appreciate it. I also want to thank Ground Zero for waiting. I want to come to you with this uh, message right now. And again, those of you on the Facebook, go ahead and continue to hit your uh, share button <laughs> while I continue. Fellow Ambazonians, about a month ago, Kumba's lone public hospital was burned down under circumstances which until now we could not emphatically say who masterminded it. Of course, tremendous damage in material and human life 
accompanied the arson. We have long known that four patients, four patients, unable to vacate their hospital beds, were burned alive in the arson. Medical equipment, furniture, medications, the laboratory and surgery theater of the hospital were all raised. Had it not been for the fact that the structures were constructed out of stone and concrete, every wall, and I mean every wall, every one of them would have come sinking to the earth. Of course, we had no doubt here at the interim government at the onset that Amber Restoration Forces were innocent of the deed. But we didn't want to rush to public conclusions with exactitude, considering the fact that clandestine Amber groups, antagonists of the struggle, almost all of them under the sponsorship of Paul Atangenji and some other CPDM elements, had since emerged and have been very, very violent and destructive in many parts of our national territory. But apart from these elements, we also had in mind that French Cameroon soldiers were capable, were capable of the deed. However, you don't rush to finger pointing an attack on such an institution as a hospital. Such senseless act of barbarism, unless there is clear reason and evidence for it, intensive investigations must be carried out. To determine the perpetrators, we thought. Today, I have come to report to you that from the investigations conducted by this interim government, all evidence on the burning of the Kumba Public Hospital points to the direction of French Cameroon soldiers initiating and carrying out the arson that reduced the Kumba General Hospital to a cheap rubble. Our conclusions are based on a number of discoveries. Number one, video footage, video footage collected from the scene of the fire, filmed by a French Cameroon soldier of Ambazonia descent, clearly put the, Fred, the French Cameroon soldiers at the scene of the fire. It shows the presence of French Cameroon soldiers at the hospital at the time of the fire. Some of them are actually seen in the footage running out of the hospital ward to escape the fire while patients who could not run are roasted to death. But apart from this, which is number two, we also gathered that because of the frequent power outages in the city of Kumba, the French Cameroon soldiers, who were meant to patrol and police the town regularly, retired to pass the night at the Kumba General Hospital to save themselves attacks from restoration forces. They feared might attack them in the dark of the night. As preventive measures, they would spend the night, French Cameroon soldiers would spend the night at a hospital and only take to the city center during the day. There are witnesses, relatives to some of the patients who were hospitalized at the time of the incident who told our investigators that they actually witnessed the soldiers coming to pass the night at the premises of the hospital on several occasions. On this particular night, an informant, a uniform officer of the force, French Cameroon force, 
told the interim government that the French Cameroon soldiers were told the Amber forces were entrapping them at a hospital that night. So the soldiers went and spied first before returning with gasoline to set the hospital on fire after discovering that a number of wounded young boys were in admission. The soldiers took them for amber boys or amber forces. But were they actually amber forces? Where did, we did not find any evidence to prove that the said boys were amber forces. The camps in Kumbai didn't report of any deaths from among themselves or injured from within themselves from the incident. So we can simply say they were not involved. Worth noting in the unfolding of the fire incident is that that none of the soldiers seen at the scene, French Cameroon soldiers seen at that scene sustained any injuries or burns. Had Amber Boys masterminded the inferno or attack, you would imagine that at least, at least, some of the soldiers recorded in the scene would have sustained some injuries or died, but none of them sustained any. Instead, they are seen rushing out of the hospital with their guns intact. And yet, another evidence, albeit circumstantial, this Kuma fire incident can only be associated to the French Cameroon army occupying the city at the time because the Cameroon army has the history of burning down not only institutions but equally whole towns and villages and sometimes pointing accusing fingers at armed brave fighters. The case of the burnings which took place in Bangorain in the western region of French Cameroon still serves as a very good example here. We also recall the testimony of another officer who was privy to the Bangorin incident prior to it happening, disclosing how Paul Atanga Inji, French Cameroon Territorial Administration Minister, masterminded, masterminded the whole thing to pin it on Amber Forces in Bangolan, a neighboring town in Ngokotinje County in the northern zone of Ambazonia. We cannot forget that for the entire duration of this war, we have seen town after town and village after village set on fire by French Cameroon soldiers. Even if you should forget about that, how can anyone forget of the fact that half a million internally displaced persons, majority living under trees, in the bushes, are there, thanks to the decimation of their homes by French Cameroon soldiers. As recently as last week, we saw smoke rising from burnt homes from the roof of from the roofs of homes in whom in Kumbo, in Boy, in Bafut, you can name more. We have thousands of refugees stuck in Nigeria. When finally they come back home, they shall have no houses to go to because when they run away for their lives, French Cameroon soldiers came behind them and burnt down their homes. Can them, Bisonoba, Aquaya, and Nkambe and others are good examples. In the contrary, Amber fighters have never been in the habit of burning down homes, talk less of institutions that serve the populist good. Apart from some police and gendarmerie barracks, 
which we generally consider to be vestiges of colonial authority and oppression in Ambazonia. Amber Restoration Forces have never, never burned down social institutions, schools included, and of course, hospitals too. Let me formally disclose here that Amber fighters have been coached in the course of this war never, never to destroy an institution that is known to serve the general public. They have observed it up to date. Having established the fact, therefore, the interim government is formally holding La Republic of Cameroon responsible, responsible for the damage done on Kumba Hospital and the suffering masses in Kumba who cannot afford overpriced private health care. There are international conventions that govern the art of war, and they clearly prohibit acts of violence on institutions such as hospitals and schools, churches too included. French Cameroon soldiers have demonstrated their disdain for international law, by breaking all of these conventions and that country and its soldiers must be held to account and to, be, and to, and to be made to pay for these crimes. In war time, hospitals know no friends and fools. They are no go areas for both friends and fools, for they treat both without questioning their side of the war. The interim government of Ambazonia calls upon the international community and human rights groups to bring pressure to bear on French Cameroon to pay restitution to the families of those burnt alive and those injured in the Kumba arson and to hastily, hastily rebuild the hospital to provide the people of Kumba a place where they can go to get affordable medical care. French Cameroon cannot be allowed to continue in this type of arson with impunity, unchallenged. The World Health Organization, the United Nations, and other humanitarian groups must act in a way that deters Cameroon, the regime, from this kind of barbarism and on Ambazonian communities. Turning now to the question of school resumption, we are sorry this may not be the message that many parents and teachers want to hear. The interim government has received many requests and suggestions for our schools to reopen in full, in full scale, and for our kids to get back to school. Some have suggested, for example, that at the barest minimum, we should allow private schools only to reopen and have only public schools shut down. We have pondered upon the idea and have figured out that that option isn't feasible. And I will explain. But first, we want every parent and teacher to have absolutely no doubt in that if we saw a window of opening or possibility, we won't hesitate for a moment, for a moment, to have our kids go back to school. For the interim government is very much aware that as this war prolongs, as this war continues, our kids, I mean the future of the kids on ground zero and ground one, is the one compromised the most. Because years lost, sitting home without going to school can never never ever be regained. 
And we also understand the painful predicament of teachers, mainly teachers in private institutions, who have continued to go without salaries for the entire duration of this war. The interim government isn't against education for our youth. Ours isn't the first war where children went to school while fighting was ongoing. In Somalia, for example, in the southern Sudan, in Syria, in Palestine, of course, there are other examples. Students, students were still able to go to school and learn and acquire education why war rage on year after year. But we wish the same condition as obtained as obtained in those places obtained in our own situation or war. None of those places had a desperate barbaric army that deliberately targeted innocent children for slaughter and classrooms for destruction as we have seen in this war. Let's remember that our, that our courts and lawyers were once shut down like the schools. But after a while, we saw the need for them to go back to court, even when conditions had not changed. If we could allow lawyers go back to the same courts, the same courtrooms where French Cameroon procurers, French Cameroon clerks, and French Cameroon judges presided over what more of the education of our kids, of our children, our brothers, and our sisters. It is not the least in our interest to want to build our new country, Ambazonia, on an illiterate population. We shall not build it on foreign exports either. It must be built by Ambazonian owns young talent. This is to tell you how much, how much this interim government values education for our youth. This interim government isn't the problem why our kids are not in school today. Paul Beer, his government, his war, and his occupying army are to blame. The regime in Yaoundé runs a parliament that is said to be made up of the people's representatives. But our schools have been shut down for three years. And children sitting at home carrying pregnancies. How many times, how many times have we seen a bill tendered in that damn parliament demanding that the government create a conducive an atmosphere for the children to go back to school. Which of the parliamentarians or sinners in the Senate have been told or have been bold enough to stand up on that floor to demand that, that Southern Cameroon children must go back to school? How many of them have taken up the courage to do so? How many of them, if indeed they care, have staged a walkout in protest of education black men in the southern Cameroons, how many, how many of them? You don't hear it or see it because they don't care and their children are not in any of the schools in Ambazonia. They no longer live in our territory anyways. Why should they care? Fellow Ambazonians, at the beginning of the current school season, the interim government thought that the safety and security situation on the ground could only, in, could only improve. We had hoped that the French Cameroon government would see reason to totally withdraw all its troops from our streets to enable a tranquil, safe passage for our children to go to school without any intimidations. Yes, it was indeed for that reason that we made it conditional, preferring 
for each parent to decide based on the security situation on the ground in each community to decide whether or not to send their kids to school. In arriving at that position, we thought that French Cameroon was going to respect international norms of war and to keep its army away from school premises and hospitals, of course. That hasn't been the case. It hasn't happened. French Cameroon soldiers have since turned quite a number of school campuses into territory, into, into military territory, and in communities where they didn't turn the schools into camps, they have burned them down on the pretext, on the pretext that amber forces have turned them into their camps. We have witnessed the military burned schools in Widekum, in Kumbo, in Wum, in Indop, in Bambala, in Minji, Ekona, Muyenge, Muyoka, and you can name all their communities. In some communities, the French Cameroon army has put up permanent structures close to school campuses with such presence posing a great threat to safety and security as they are known to shoot to kill. Another big security concern is that, or the fact that, is the fact, is the fact that our male and female teenagers have become targets of indiscriminate assassinations and rapes by the French Cameroon army. We live under a situation where every young child, boy or girl, is a target because the soldiers have been made to believe these young ones, these young ones, ambas, these young ones are Ambazonia's Boko Haram fighters. We are aware of cases where the Cameroon military has gone into university campuses, broke into hostels, and randomly shoot students. Students preparing for exams in the University of Bamenda, for example, have been shot and killed on several occasions. The University of Boya has seen its fair share of the shootings and the killings. No one can deny it. How can then, how then can any parent in a good conscience, allow his or her child to head for school under such atmosphere of insecurity. Considering the circumstances, the interim government has come to the conclusion that only, only the international community can resolve this school issue if they can prevail on the Yawande regime to withdraw its forces from our communities and have us guarantee the safety and the security of our kids going back to school. We wish that UNESCO in particular steps into this situation and pave the way for our kids to be able to return to the classroom. This interim government is totally aware of the rights of children to education, even, even during wartime, and will not, again, we will not deliberately stop or hinder any child from going to school for a minute once French Cameroon is made to pull out or withdraw its troops from our communities. Allowing private institutions to carry on with schools doesn't hold water because it is considered a segregation. And in any matter, you expose the students of those institutions to danger. And by the way, you let private schools resume. What do you do? 
to the children or with the children of the hundreds of thousands of the internally displaced who are in the bushes. Because the moment the children come out from their hidings, from the bushes, the French Cameroon military will kill them as amber boys. And assuming that this was even feasible, what happens then to the thousand others in refugee camps in Nigeria? The United Nations isn't taking care of their education. If opportunities should exist for some to go back to school. It is our opinion here at the interim government that all, all must benefit. All must benefit from such an opportunity. No child, no child should be left behind. Such an opportunity will believe only the United Nations or UNESCO can create. And only when French Cameroon military completely, completely pulls out from every one of our communities. Children going back to school is as incumbent upon the force of, upon the force, I'm sorry, children going back to school is incumbent upon the force of the international community as, or just as calling for inclusive dialogue, open dialogue is incumbent upon the regime in French Cameroon. We have no power. This interim government has no power to ensure security for schools, nor the standing to call for an inclusive dialogue. Paul Beard can do any of this if he so desires. The pressure should be on him. We all want our kids back in the classroom. Thanks for watching and good night.